Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub so you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And today we're going to be tackling the full story of Empire's X-Men. So we're going to be covering Hickman's full run, all four issues, giving you the full story of exactly what happened with the X-Men during the Empire event. If you guys haven't been checking out Empire, I will leave a link both in the description and at the top of the screen for you guys to check out everything Empire related. I think right now there, there's roughly around 20 issues out that's covering everything Empire. I have a playlist putting it all together from, from very start of the release to what is currently coming out now. So without further ado, let's dive into this issue. All right, so picking up with this four part series, we pick up with the Scarlet Witch, and she's devastated by the loss of Genosha and all the mutants, the 16 million mutants that had died, and she just wants to bring them back. And so for, for months, she travels, trying to create some kind of, of magical item of sorts. And what she's been doing is trying to do a resurrection spell to try to bring all of these mutants back. But something goes terribly wrong. Now, picking up in present day, we have the Katadi fleet that has invaded Earth. And their goal right now is to get to Wakanda. The Katadi want to be able to get the Vibranium to be able to grow a super weapon, essentially. A plant-based super weapon. But up upon arriving at Genosha, they're met with Explodey Boy. And, you know, he's, he's super sarcastic and, and super just messing with them and he lets them know like this is probably the worst place you could have landed like it for an invasion force this is not the place you want to be like there's 16 million mutants on this like humans with but with powers and this is where we see explodey boy literally blow himself up and then the ground starts to shake and they're met with two million mutants who before all of this took off they were vegetarians and now essentially they have plant brains to eat now our, our story skips over to angel and penance and they're just relaxing having a good time magic's with them and they're they're essentially running errands for professor x and, and they're doing essentially business stuff you know, stuff that these guys don't really want to be doing. And so they take a portal back to Krakoa. This is where they're met with Black Tom and Professor X, Magneto, and a few of the others. And Professor X just lets, lets Angel know, like, I know you feel like this stuff is beneath you, but, you know, I need X-Corp. We need this to go off the ground. Like, this is going to be the beneficial thing for all mutants alike. And he's one of the few people that Professor X trusts to be able to do something like this. And so they get a report that the Genosha portal isn't working right something's up with it and so they put together a team of angel mana and magic and so we have multiple man penance angel all here trying to figure out what's up with this portal like why is it down what's going on with it and this is when they see the the katadi army running but it's not at them it's from something else and then they see the horde of zombies behind them and as this battle ensues multiple man figures out like the the katadi plant life is essentially stopping the portal from opening and so just in the nick of time they're able to get the portal open and before the zombies are able to pile through this portal this green goo is shot all over them and this is when we see our horticulture ladies I really love the horticulture ladies. They're freaking awesome. I think it's a group of old ladies that just kick butt and, and are almost sexist at times. It, it's actually just, it's really funny. It's a lot of fun. And that is where that episode will leave off. Our next issue picks us up literally at the same moment. So these ladies come through the gate and they're met by Angel and Magic and everybody else. And they're here to, to try to, to get samples. This is a, a science experiment more or less for them. Like plant life sensing beings this is literally everything they could hope for and there seems to be some some real tension between the, the the team and the horticulture ladies and one of the horticulture ladies sprays angel in the face with a pheromone and he just instantly like falls in love with them and now like he's uh, he's macking on them like he's trying to hit on them like it, it's just really funny seeing him under their spell but it also doesn't work on women and so while the horror culture ladies are getting multiple man and angel to to do their bidding they, there's still a horde of zombies coming their way and so even with 
with their disagreements, they're still taking on all these zombies and Katati alike. And it just seems to be never ending. And we see magic summon demons from Limbo and just start devouring plant people. Now the Katati are, are thinking that they've lost this fight. You know, they highly underestimated what would be here in, in terms of resistance. So back on the Katati warship, they're trying to initiate a self-destruct sequence. But Explody Boy's right behind this guy, trying to eat his brains. And so before the, the everything is able to take off, Explody Boy eats this guy. But it seems maybe he, he got the system online or something of that nature, because something happens. And we see a, a flower type of blossom, a seed mature. And vines start coming out of the ground everywhere. Like a, a seed pod or a botanical womb. It's breeding, it's creating something. Something's growing inside of it. Now Black Tom back at home base is is trying to be able to get in communications with them. But something's blocking the portal. Like he's unable to, to be able to reach them. And so he, he creates an avatar out of pollen and things in, that are naturally occurring. And goes to magic and asks like... What's the situation? Like, what's going on? And she just lets him know, like, we're getting overrun. Like, this is way too much. Too much is happening. Like, we need some help. And so they try to combat this by using plant-based magic or, or plant-based weapons, essentially arming themselves in, in root systems. But it's not working. Like, it just seemed to make them more angry. It made this, this giant egg sack more angry. And then we learn that the horticulture ladies are the ones actually stopping the gate and so magic drops them into limbo it was like listen you're going to open up this gate or you're going to be spending the rest of your life right there and so reluctantly they open up the gate and this is when magic puts out a, a broadcast to all of Krokoa and ask for all available psychics to get to Genosha as soon as possible like it's immediate it's urgent we need your help right now and this is where we see the arrival of our omega level psychic mutants now most of these guys have like a, a villain like backstory or history but these guys are literally the most powerful you can imagine when it comes to psychic abilities you know we have Kid Omega we have the the Stefford Coco or Cuckoos, you know, they're all united by a uh, telepathic created by the the Weapon Plus program. You have Mastermind, you have Master Illusionist, you have Mastermind and Lady Mastermind. You have Exodus and Mr. Sinister. You know, Exodus is a practically a mortal Omega level mutant. You know, the former right hand of Magneto himself. You, we have Black Queen, Celine. Come on, guys! Like this is this is freaking ridiculous. We got Shadow King. You know, this this lets us know that he's you know he's now a resident of uh, Krakoa. You know, so collectively this group is one of the most powerful X Men teams ever gathered in one place. You know, some of these people have been hosts for the Phoenix Force. So it's just absolutely awesome to be able to see all of these guys in one place coming together for, for the greater good. And that's where it will take us up into our next issue. It will be issue number three. And now we pick up on Genosha and that, that egg sac, the seed pod, it is just grown exponentially. It's taller than buildings at this point. And we have zombies eating the brains of everybody around them. And then we see the Katati themselves turn into zombies. And they all going start going after the seed pod, and the Katati break through and show them all the other zombies a way in. Now, at this time, we have the rest uh, of the X-Men in our Omega-level squad just wrecking havoc on the living Katati and the zombies that are here fighting them. And it's actually really cool. Like, we see them just start laying waste. And, and we see Opal, which is one of the horticultural ladies, taken by magic to Beast. And Beast is pretty much there to help her try to make a serum to be able to kill all these plants, kind of like a weed killer. Now, as this battle rages on, Explody Boy comes up to the X-Men and is like, hey, listen, like, we're going to help you guys out, but we get whatever body parts are left over after this is all done. Like, we got a deal. And so he blows up, and then that's when we're taken back over to Beast. And they seem to have found their weed killer solution. But the portal is still having issues. So who better to go to, 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 to distribute this serum onto this giant seed pod than Nightcrawler himself? 
the human teleport. And so he pops, starts popping around the battlefield and gets to the egg sack and, it, and ends up blowing a hole through this thing, which allow all the zombies to be able to start hopping into it as well. Now during this magic, it, it decides to start teleporting around with one of the uh, other X-Men. And they're trying to find the source of, of where all this is coming from. Like there's a magical source that, that all this is derived from and, and they can sense it and they're trying to find it. And so they come across the, the staff that was originally placed here by Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. And she picks up this, this staff and immediately becomes the demon form. And she just feels an immense amount of power run through her. And she just revels in it. Now picking up back on the battlefield, you know, all our zombies are literally just eating tons of, you know, multiple men. Because his body, you know, he, he's got multiple of himself that died. And so they're just being eaten. And it's just like a horrific sight. And then we see magic come to, come to the battlefield. And she just, you know, almost evil in the way that she talks. And it's like, you know, she's... She's now controller of the, the world root tree, you know, which is the, the bridge between the realms of life and death, you know, the, the, the tri-crown, the chaos godhead, you know, this prevents the laws of nature. And then she starts to, like, control the dead Katati, and she's the zombie queen of New Genosha. Now, picking up back at our seed pod, there seems to be a giant brain inside of this thing. And all the zombies are just having a field day eating away at this thing. And then we see it come to life, and arms and eyeballs pop out from underneath the ground, and we see this giant broadleaf lord arise from this this seed pod the the brain of this thing is literally like a hat on it and that will be the end of issue number three now picking up with issue number four we're met with scarlet witch and she realized her resurrection spell turned everybody into zombies and she goes back to dr strange is like we need to unring this bell like i i rung this bell i get it i shouldn't have done it but i need your help on fixing this and so both of them head over to Genosha with the staff that magic now carries. And first, Doctor Strange puts down a barrier spell so nobody can get off of the island. None of the zombies can leave this place. And now what the, spe the staff is supposed to do is after 30 days, it's supposed to pretty much get rid of everybody, all the zombies on this island. The, the, the resurrection she spell she casts will dissipate and the staff itself will lose power. You know, but Doctor Strange lives another like this is going to be maybe 30 days. Like, it's not an exact science. Like, this is magic. Roughly 30 days, though. Now, picking up 29 days later, we have our Broadleaf Lord busting out of his cocoon. And everybody turns and is just in awe at how ginormous and brutal this thing is going to be to fight. Now, picking up with Beast, he, he kind of stole tech from the horticulture ladies and he opened up his own portal now opening up this portal he brought somebody through and it's explodey boy but not the mutant explodey boy that is dead the mutant explodey boy that is still alive and he goes to the battlefield and he finds himself and we really get some deep dialogue here about just how Explodey Boy is doing in the real world. Not here on Genosho as a zombie, but, you know, what's going on? Like, is he doing good? And he lets, you know, the, the, the zombie version of him know, like, I'm doing great. You know, and I, like, I kissed a girl. Like, life is going great. We are happy right now. And while all this is happening, there's the, the, the battle against this giant monster is still going on. But this story is really just focusing around this sweet innocent moment even in, in the midst of a battle and so with this reassurance the zombie explodey boy puts on a jetpack and and launches himself into the mouth of this giant monster and just detonates and we see pieces of this monster just fly everywhere and we still have magic over here you know thinking that she's just going to enslave everybody and that she's gonna rule over everything. And then the wand disappears and she's back to her normal self. And she's just like, I don't regret anything. Horticulture ladies take off before anybody can say anything. And every, at this point, everybody's just like, all right, like, we're done. Like, let's go the freak home. You know, but this is the story. This is this is what they do over and over again. It ends how it ends. It's done. And then you get on with it. You move on. You keep on moving on with life. 
you know, unless, of course, you can't live with it. Unless, of course, you won't. And it, that just goes to show, you know, Scarlet Witch not being able to live with what she's done. You know, she just in complete disarray over 16 million mutants being dead and, and her not being able to do anything to fix it. And that will bring this story to a close. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So with this story, I, I, I really did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, but I think there was a lot of, of missed opportunity here when it came to our Omega level mutants. Like we had a team that could have been devastating to this entire army without any extra help from someone like Explody Boy. And I really felt like that ending was anticlimactic. Like it was cool, it, it was touching, but you had so much potential to go on here and you didn't do it. it. It almost felt like they just rushed this last issue, which really sucks. But the story is what it is. I, I'm not too upset about it. I still enjoyed the story altogether. Uh, I'm really enjoying Empire as a whole. I'm really enjoying everything going on with Captain Marvel. I'm curious if we're going to see the X-Men anymore within the Empire event going on. But yeah, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you think the ending was anticlimactic? Did you expect that to happen? Like, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe to the page. And until the next video.